I had never ever heard of um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy before in my life. Um, so during one of the tests, when they had done an echo, the lady that was doing it, I said, what is this? I don't understand what it is. And this might be kind of crude to say, but she said, you know, the athletes that are playing basketball or football and they drop and they can't be revived. That's what you have. All right. <laughs> so that scared me a little bit. I was short of breath. Um, I could not walk long distances. Um, irregular heartbeats, you know, and, and they scared you. You, you. It scared you. I have an extensive uh, family history um, with heart disease on my father's side. Uh, my grandfather, I never met him, but he died at the age of 42 of a massive heart attack. My dad had his first heart attack at 42. However, he did live until he was 72, but he never really recovered and he constantly had congestive heart failure for him. Um, his brother, my uncle, had the severe heart issues and so does my aunt on his side. So kind of knew some of us were going to get it, you know. So um, right now in the family, it happens to be me. I was then referred to um, Dr. Timick at um, the Meyer Heart Center. Uh, he's a wonderful man, <laughs> wonderful man. Um, and their plan was to go in and replace my valve with um, an artificial valve. Went in at 5.30. Um, I think I was done from what family tells me at 3.30. So they had suggested it be six hours and it'd be nine. The first instant, I'll, I'll never forget, and I don't know why I remember it, because I was not fully conscious at all. I don't even really remember seeing family there. But I was laying there like the Pillsbury Doughboy, full of fluid, um, in and out of consciousness. But this lady from uh, that cleans the rooms walked in. I remember looking at her out of the corner of my eye, and she noticed I was looking at her. And um, she said... Uh, she said, good morning, beautiful woman. <laughs> and I said, thank you, I think. But um, that was the first, that's the first memory I have of being conscious. And, and to me, that, that was powerful. And I, I, I knew I looked horrible. You know, I have tubes all over and stuff on your face and you're bloated up. Um, so I do, she's one I'll never forget. Before I left, I met with social services, I met with the pharmacy, um, in-home care folks. So all of that was set up for me before I left, which you must have. You have got to have help. You cannot go home and think you can do it by yourself. It is impossible. It is a big, big surgery to go through. It was probably 10 days after I was home, the physical therapy came to the house. Um, I didn't really want them there then. I still wasn't ready, but um, it's good that you have people that, that make you do that. Um, she didn't ask a lot, you know. They had a little bicycle that you pedal, sitting in a chair. Um, she did take me outside. I don't even think I walked a block, you know. It was back and forth really, really slowly, you know. Went to see Dr. Timmick for uh, my follow-up post-op. And uh, he said he would release me to go do physical therapy um, at Gerber. Um, so we started on that the following week. I got there one morning and I walked in and I said to the gal that runs that, the physical therapy, I said, something's not right. My, I, I don't feel right. Something is not right. Um, so she took my blood pressure. Um, that was low, but my heart rate was 37, um, which is not acceptable. Um, I got really lucky. Um, one of the gals that works in there, I, her name's Brandy. Brandy, I love you, and I thank you for helping me. If you ever see this, Dr. Timmick said to me, he said, I can only explain it this way, that you may understand it, that your heart is a muscle, and your heart is mad at you right now, because just like regular muscles, you get muscle memory. Well, your heart's trying to get back to where it was in this comfortable, odd little rhythm that it was in. And we're forcing it now to, to change. So 
I, you know, that helped me, you know, calm down and know that this is going to be a long, long time to try to get back to where I want to get back to. My valve, I hear it all the time. So I know it's there and I know the issue is there, but it's a comforting feeling for me. Some people just freak out over it because they can't stand it or it drives them crazy. But I hear it, you know, tick, 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 tick. And I know it's working, that something's working right. But you've got to listen to your your heart, your stomach, everything, and be your advocate and follow through. I mean, the doctors are wonderful. Uh, they've got lots and lots of patients, though, and you've only got yourself. So, you know, if it's not right, keep searching, you know.